Hey, and <clears throat> welcome to the Life Coach University and my PIF talk. Take your own luck. For those of you not familiar with Life Coach University, it's on a mission to coach to make coaching accessible to millions through its pay it forward platform. You can learn and grow through various PIF talks and other events for the small price of just paying it forward. Your PIF doesn't have to be huge or even cost any money. Just do something to spread the love. You, that can mean sharing what you've learned here, introducing someone to Life Coach University, offering a smile to a stranger, shoveling their driveway, raking their leaves, or just bringing in their newspaper. Whatever you feel is appropriate to pay it forward would be great. Life Coach University offers many sessions and events. In fact, <clears throat> there is an event coming up on Wednesday, uh, February 16th at 9 a.m. entitled Get the Secrets on How to Reach Your Goals with four of our amazing coaches. You can also check out some other PIF talks while you're there. There's so many different topics. This week alone, we have topics such as living your life on purpose with Heather Flake, finding simplicity with Jody Jackson, and building better habits or getting rid of bad ones with Brian Peterson. There's truly something for everyone. So are you ready? Okay, let's get started. Welcome to Luck, Make It Yours. I'm your coach, Liz Cressy. It's really great to see everyone here today. But before we jump in, I'd like to get a couple of housekeeping items out of the way. First, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking <clears throat> at my notes. The format here today will be to hold any questions or comments to the end and put them in the Q&A section. Please don't put them in the chat. I'm not looking at the chat. I can't manage the chat as well. And if you put them in the Q&A session, section, I will be reading them out in their entirety, um, but I will not mention your name for confidentiality purposes. So, okay, that's great. Let's go. Let's get lucky. Have you ever labeled someone as lucky? Have you ever heard a child say, lucky, when confronted with a friend who shows up with something that they have wanted? I know I have. Now, I'm a quote person, and I believe there's a lot to be learned from what people say, especially those who have already made their mark in the world. So I ran across two quotes that I've kept, me, that I've kept with me over the years, and I'd like to share them with you today. The first is by Jack Canfield. He's a motivational speaker and the founder and creator of the Chicken Soup series. His quote, quote, I believe that people make their own luck by great preparation and good strategy. Oprah Winfrey, a woman who most likely needs no introduction, a media mogul, said, quote, I believe luck is preparation meeting opportunity. If you hadn't been prepared when the opportunity came along, you wouldn't have been lucky. When I read those quotes, I experienced a cross between, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense, and holy cow, because they really resonated with me. You mean luck is not reserved for those other people? Luck is for you, for me, for everyone who chooses to set themselves up to experience it? Could it really be that simple? My mind just could not get around it. That all I had to do was be prepared, have a strategy and be ready for the opportunity. So when I was thinking about this, uh, I decided to look a little bit deeper to see really what makes up luck. And I ran across a book, The Luck Factor by Professor Richard Wiseman. He's done a lot of research on the subject and conducted hundreds of studies. And what I discovered is yes, it can really be that simple. We can all take control and create the luck for ourselves. In his book, <clears throat> Richard Wiseman discovered there are basically only four principles to luck. Maximize your chance opportunities, listen to your lucky hunches, Expect good fortune and turn your bad luck into good. They seem real simple, right? 
So we are going to touch on these and their components throughout parts of the program. But first, back to Oprah and Jack. I read and reread their words. These are two very successful people who have so generously offered their inspiration time and time again. They had to know something, right? So I created a formula because I love formulas. My formula is this, preparation plus strategy times opportunity equals luck. Let me say that again. Preparation plus strategy times opportunity equals luck. Logical, right? So we're gonna dive into each of these, but today we're gonna start looking at preparation. So what is preparation? Preparation is being ready for what comes. Now, how do you get prepared for something you're not sure is coming? Well, the key to that, and it may be obvious, is that you need to have a plan. You need to know what you want to come down the pike in the future. So this plan is, is the beginning. It's the beginning of your roadmap. Think of, the, think of it as planning a trip, right? For those of you watching here, well, it could be for your business or it could be for you. It's the same process. Like, so planning this road trip, you have to decide where you're going. What are your goals? I know a few years ago, we took our children on a road trip and we all sat around the table and we pinpointed places that we wanted to go. So in order to start our plan, we had to know where we were going. So what's the first thing when you do when you go somewhere new? You put the address into a GPS. I pull out my phone and I enter the address and then I sit back and I allow the plan, the GPS to guide me. For your business, most of you would have some idea of where you wanna go for your business, but you need to get really clear. If it's for something personal, you too need to be clear because for some people it's easy. They've known their entire lives where they're going and when they wanna get there. They just know. You've heard those children, they're four years old and they wanna be a doctor and they grow up and they be a doctor. For others, like me, it's more a matter of trial and error. It's going down a path that intrigues you. So here you wanna take a closer look at your interests and your dreams. In fact, I find it helpful to write a list and just a dream list. Put everything down that, you see, that seems to be interesting and exciting to you. And then spend some time with each one. Put the list down for a couple of days, pick it up again, the more you do this, you will see that certain ones stand out. And once you have those goals that stand out and really make you feel like you wanna move in that direction, maybe they make you a little nervous, give you some butterflies. Maybe they just feel the, like they're the right way to go. These will be your big picture items. So keep them written down, dig into them a little bit. Discover what about it speaks to you for each one. How do they fit with your core values? Having goals that stick with your core values, whether it's your business values or your personal values, will help you stick to it. Why do you want them? What is it about them that's important to you? Really get clear on the nuances of the goal and understand what it is about this goal that is important. It's more than the goal themselves. It's the result. What does it bring? What does it mean to you if you make these goals and you attain them? How would you know that you've arrived? These are important things to consider when you're making your plan so that it stays connected to you. But also on the flip side, Ask yourself the question, what happens if you don't make it? Who do you need to become to attain these goals? These are all key critical questions to ask when you're making your plan. So it's at this point that you have your list of goals. Now things are starting to get exciting. 
you know where you're headed and you have your big picture items. Now it's time to get a little bit more granular and decide what your priorities are because you can't do everything at once. It, you just won't get very far. So really look and see a lot of these may be related. It may be pretty obvious which ones need to come first and it may not. And that's okay. You just need to prioritize. So now you have your plan. You have your big picture goals. You have your priorities. <clears throat> I suggest that you write it out and write it out in such a way that it's meaningful to you. Have fun with it. Make it visual. Use graphics, colors, or stickers maybe. And just create this visual representation that helps keep that drunk monkey at bay. That would be the judge. That would be your mind that plays tricks on you and tries to talk you out of what you want. So by having a visual representation, it makes it much more interesting and something that you can glance at and keep it top of mind. It's, it's very important to have this written out and in such a fashion that you're willing to look at it on a regular basis, multiple times a day. Some people read it first thing in the morning when they wake up and last thing at night before they go to sleep. It keeps the excitement going. It helps you dream more about having these goals and it helps you start to expect them to happen. The more you see it, the more you think about it, the more concrete that this could be. So here's some ideas. You could draw it out in pictures. Perhaps you just mind map it if you're a little bit more logical that way and want to see the connections. You could create a vision board, whether it's in, on paper, on your computer. There are plenty of apps out there that can help you and help you use these resources to be able to create this for you. Um, or you could just use an old fashioned pen and paper. Some people believe that writing a future letter to yourself is helpful. And while I do too, I think that helps to get some clarity around creating your plan. But the, the letters are hard because the reason I suggest a visual representation is that you want to be able to see it and know exactly what that is. So if you do it in your computer, perhaps you wanna print out a copy, you might put it on your phone as your screensaver have it pop up every once in a while, but have it there so you can see where you're going and know your why. Because when you know why you want to do something, it's way more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, connected to you. So having a, a basic plan will already put you ahead of the game. Most people don't plan. They say that the top 3% of the people write their, you know, have their goals and the top 1% write them down. So have the plan. It's a great start towards being prepared. It's also a great start to making your luck. Now you've dreamt it, you've, you've visualized it. It's time to move and really expect it. So spend some time every day with you and your plan. This is your future we're talking about. So let's keep it moving forward. According to Professor Wiseman and his book that we discussed, the overall third principle of his is expect good fortune. And this is what he says. Lucky people's expectations about the future help them fulfill their dreams and ambition. This is made up because lucky people expect good luck to continue into the future. They have positive expectations. By having this written down and by having a visual and spending time with it every day, you too will start to be, have this positive expectation. Lucky people attempt to achieve their goals, even if their chance of success seems slim. And they persevere even in the face of failure. Because you know where you're going and it becomes a nothing else is gonna get in the way, this is what I'm working towards, and it helps you move through. And he also says that lucky people expect the, their interaction with others to be lucky and successful. 
So that brings us to the topic of the next segment that we will do, mindset. We're gonna tackle that next month. Until then, you wanna dive into your dreams and pull out those interests, test those ideas. And once you have your goals, your destination, have fun. This is a fun process. You're creating your future. And as I said, you wanna post it somewhere you'll see it often, but you also wanna move it around like Elf on a Shelf. If it stays too long in one place, it becomes part of the background and you don't see it anymore. You know you've done this, I've done this myself. I'll set alarms in my phone and if it doesn't, if it rings every day, then I stop seeing it. Um, I will put something out because I need to see it to remind me and I will totally forget. So you wanna be able to hack yourself and move it around. Involve the family, involve your, <clears throat> your colleagues, make it a game, have somebody put it somewhere new every week and it will surprise you. So this is your future or your business's future. The time is now to stop doing what you've always done. Because if you do what you've always done, you're gonna to continue to get what you will, you've always gotten. So try something new. I cannot wait to see what you've come up with. I've ho I hope I've sparked some, some thoughts, some new ones, maybe helped you remember some old ones, create creative ones, or excited ones. A lot of this information isn't new. It's just something that you need to hear again and again. Take some time and sit down and really commit. Maybe grab yourself a cup of tea or a fa your favorite beverage. Plan an afternoon when it's just you and sit and dream. Dream, visualize, brainstorm, and you could enlist a friend. Perhaps that would be helpful. So I appreciate it. Let me see if we have any questions or comments. Again, if you do, please use the Q&A box. And for the sake of confidentiality, I'll read your comments and questions, but I won't use your name. All right, hang on here. So the first one, thank you, Liz. This has been super useful and very encouraging, very encouraging to plan up my future. Thank you for that comment. I really appreciate it. Sometimes it just takes the reminder um, and I look forward to seeing what you do. Another attendee, I just moved my vision board, thank you. I think that it's such a great concept that we really don't think about. You post it on the refrigerator and you forget it. How often have you done that with, with children's artwork or something that you've got, that you received in the mail that really meant something to you? And after a while, it just becomes noise. It's a little hack but it's really effective. We have another comment here. Yeah, I'm going to set a date with a friend to write up my dream list. So much fun. Make it fun. This is exciting. This is your future every day. It's not something that we're taught in school, but every day you wake up with a clean slate and you're creating what you want. Keep it top of mind, keep it important and help bring in others around you to support you and be your accountability partners. We do have a we do have another comment. This has been useful. Thank you. I love how you break it down. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much and thanks for thanks everyone for joining. Uh, let's see here. I do have an additional question. Would you please talk a bit about values? You mentioned my goals should fit my core values. <clears throat> I'm not sure what those are. Really great question, and I appreciate you asking. So, of course, I've heard them described as things, beliefs, or characteristics which are central to a person's identity. This is, again, is not something that we're taught growing up, but it's something that manifests itself as we move along. So, some examples of core values would be um, freedom, accountability responsibility, respect, uh, fairness, independence, growth, learning or education. I mean, the list could go on and on. If you're not quite sure what your values are, you can go online and look for a list. There's plenty of them out there. You can find a list of 10, you can find a list of 300. 
and use this as a jumping off point. Brene Brown and James Clear actually have two really good lists available out there. They're about 50 uh, adjectives that describe. And take a look at these and just read through the list. Pick out five or 10 that seem to jump out at you and just sit with it. I know I say that a lot, but it really does help to sort of sit with it and, and feel into these into these values, into these adjectives, and then <clears throat> ask yourself about times in your life where you've experienced those. When have you, when was the last time you've experienced freedom? How did that feel? What about fairness or respect? Certainly in today's world, we hear a lot about that out there on TV. And I find that a lot of people do have that somewhere on their list. So once you have your list of about five or 10, take a moment and put them in order by taking the first one that comes to your list and asking yourself which one feels more important to you, the first one or the second one, the first one or the third one, the first one or the fourth one, and go on down the list. And then take the second one and put it against the third one, put it against the fourth one, Etc. until you're done. And you will see, they will jump out at you, which ones seem to be more important to you. Also, you can think about times in your life when you were exceptionally proud of something that you've accomplished, or you've had just an amazing day. And these are the kinds of scenarios and situations that will help you identify things that are really important to you and resonate with you. I think we've spent a lot of time just going through the motions and not really thinking about what can, what is truly important to us. So once you have your values list, you can help, it will help you make decisions and it will help you create these goals that really resonate with those values. Because if they do, then you're more likely to stick to them. I hope that answers your question. There's plenty of it out there. Um, there's also something I've noticed coming up called anti-values. And they're just as good to know. Those would be things that go directly against something that is important to you. Just like they say, anti-values. So let's see here. Uh, another comment, you've inspired me to start a vision board. Thank you, I appreciate that. Also, my core values seem to change on what's going on for me before my values was working long, hard hours. Now my value is being available for homeschooling. Sometimes I worry that I flip flop around in values and what's important. Oh, I totally understand that. However, I challenge you with a question. Are those really your core values or are they just values of yours? And there's a difference. The core values are something that you just cannot seem to get away from. It always seems to come up. I'll give you an example. For me, one of my core values is freedom. One of my core values is growth and independence. So even if no matter what I do, there's always has to be a piece of one of those or more of them in whatever it is I'm doing in order for me to feel completely satisfied. And I understand the work long hours. Uh, we've been taught years ago that working hard is synonymous with success. And for some of us, that very well may be. Um, but I, I challenge you to really look into them and look back on your life and see if there were other times that, that they stood out that you could create a new list and, and see a lot of them will still be on there. Um, I have another question here. Just to be clear, are you saying that we shouldn't put the vision board on or the mind map on the refrigerator? Yeah, move it around. Um, I was trying to come up when I was creating this course, I was trying to come up with a great, you know, another elf on the shelf kind of saying, didn't work very well. Plan on a fan just didn't seem like it really worked. So um, have fun. This is, again, this is 
a creative exercise. And this is about you and your life. And it's very exciting. And I hope you feel that way. <clears throat> so, oh, um, somebody's asking if I would repeat the four principles from the book. I only got the first one, of course. So again, it's uh, Professor Richard Wiseman. Uh, let's see here. And the first one is, I just missed it on my notes, maximize your chance opportunities. And this is something that we will talk about later in the year. Um, listen to your lucky hunches, go with your gut, expect good fortune and turn your bad luck into good. So with that, I would like to uh, read one more, anti-values. I've never heard of that. Amazing. I just thought there were some people in my life who are anti-value to what I value. So true. And knowing your anti-values really is just as important because it does help you guide and it gives you sort of a, a, a benchmark and boundaries to know what works and what doesn't. So if there's no more questions, I really appreciate that you all turned up today. And I thank you very much. This was been my first PIF talk. And I just thank you for spending your time with me. Uh, I'll be picking up here next month and we'll continue preparation as we move into mindset. Because in order to be prepared, it's important to know where you're going, but you also have to be able to change and, and work on your mindset so that it aligns with, with your goals and your directions. And if you can't make those changes, you just won't see the opportunities. As somebody has once said, again, my quotes, change the way you think about things and things you think about will change. It's very true. Just a reminder, this is PIF Talk was brought to you by Life Coach University's Pay It Forward platform. PIF, Pay It Forward. So please consider paying it forward in any way that you choose. And let's make the world a better place. Just one good deed, one moment, or one smile at a time. The world needs love, especially in this day and age. So please too check out university, lifecoachuniversity.com. Again, we on Tuesdays is the Uni Life Coach University Conference with four of our awesome coaches. It's Wednesday, February 16th at 9 a.m. Eastern. Get the secrets on how to reach your goals. And please also check out some of the other amazing PIF talks happening this week, including the Compass Club by Nancy Sawyer and High Performance Habits by Jay Teague. I thank you all and I appreciate you. And I wish you a, lot, a great day and I'll see you next month.